Okay, all right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go through all the instruments of the car and what the car uh, components are. Also, we're going to do, obviously, when you get in the car, we call it the cabin drill. So basically, we'll start off with the first thing. Obviously, when you would first get into the car, the very first thing that you would do is you would adjust yourself into a seating position. So what we would do is we use the levers under the chair to adjust yourself. Yep. And obviously mm -hmm. if you need to, the backrest is on the side here mm -hmm. just to lift up the seat. And basically the way you want to be sitting is there is a bend in your arm and obviously you bend with your knees and your feet should be able to touch both pedals. Yep. If you're comfortable like that. Yep. Yep. That's good. All right, then obviously the other instruments that are in the car, which are the main two, are your pedals. Uh, in this vehicle, we've got the dual controls. Obviously, that's why sometimes that if you, I need to use them, it's a brake pedal, which is the middle one. And then you've got your accelerator pedal, which is the one on the right hand side. Now, you generally don't drive with two feet. There's no law against driving with two feet, but you do generally would drive with one. And what you do is use the ball of your heel to move over to push the brake and to push the accelerator over here. Mm -hmm. You know, and you've got to do it obviously in a comfortable way. You don't use your toes, you want to use the actual like, part of your foot. So obviously to accelerate. And that's it. Obviously, you know, look, this isn't the standard of you coming in, you wouldn't come in, adjust your seat, start it. The other thing, obviously, you would be looking at is obviously is your seatbelt mm -hmm. um, that you would have put on beforehand, which would have spoke. But we're not going in at the moment, so you don't need to wear them. But obviously, you understand the gist yeah. of basically what um, the seatbelt would do, and obviously adjusting the seat. We've got the handbrake, obviously, to the center. You know, when we release it, we press it, put it all the way down, yeah, and then when we lift it. We press it as well, and we lift it up too. So there's no pressing, and then that it's a. Is there a reason why we press? Well, because you're hitting the you're hitting the little gear yeah. in there with the brake cable, okay. and I would assume that you'd be you know wearing it out over top. So you lift it, and then you release. Mm -hmm. You know, then we've got what we call obviously the gear stick. You know, at the moment it's in park. With most cars these days, you've got to have your foot on the on the brake pedal to be able to disengage so that you can go into drive. But you've got P here for park. Mm -hmm. You've got R for reverse. N for neutral, which is when you're idling. You've got D, for obviously for drive. Now, these most automatics have the function where you can put it in a manual setting mm -hmm. so that you can go through first, second, third, and fourth without the use of a clutch. Obviously, with the manual car, you've got your accelerator, you've got your brake, and then you've got your clutch, which you have to would use to change gears. You know, I don't, if I'm throwing a lot, it's only just to sort of put it out there, and then obviously, you know, when we need these things, we'll, you know, can do them slowly. Uh, this is an important feature here. All cars are modified with a little arrow, red arrow, and when you press it on, that's the hazard lights. And that is letting others know something is wrong. That's correct. With the car. So that always needs That's to be. Yeah. Emergency lanes on the road are primarily used for emergency situations yeah. only. They're not actually used for going to the toilet. Uh, if you've got to answer a phone call, they're there for emergency situations. On obviously on a freeway, you mainly find them. Um, pardon me. You mainly would find um, emergency lanes. But obviously if the car is overheated or it's broke down or you can't drive for some reason or something's happened, there's a, perhaps a medical emergency, you can pull over and you put your hazard lights on. That's letting other car, cars know that there's obviously a situation there. You know. Then obviously this car has a coffee cup holder, you know, which is always a good. Uh, we've got a little console, obviously to store some belongings. And things like that and then we've got the other console which is in the front here which is also we can use um, if we go into the finer details obviously you know we've got the door handle we've got most cars these days are electric mirrors um, that 
we've got that we can use. Now, they can't be used at the moment. If you try and do them, it won't work. That's because with the key, it's got two starts. It's got your first, which goes, you turn one to go to your auxiliaries, which basically allows the radio, electric windows, and things like that. But anything that's battery operated will be able to work. Then you've got your next click over, which is to actually turn the car over to actually start it. And we'll do that soon. But then we've got the radio, obviously as well, with all these little accoutrements. We've also got the air conditioning control. And then we've also got the demister. What do you reckon the demister does there? To, um, to unfog windows. That's correct. Yeah. So you can yeah. see. That's right. Clearer. Now, this is an older car, so the demister only operates the back windscreen, yep. not the front. And nowadays you get cars that have front windscreen. But obviously if it's been a cold morning mm -hmm. and the windows are foggy, you can put the demister on and if you notice on the back of the windscreen there's all these lines yes, that's know. that's to heat up the glass so that obviously you can see it mm -hmm. on frosty mornings when it's really cold and there's ice you're going to have to clean it because you've always got to maintain a clear visual view of all the windows obviously when you're driving otherwise you don't know where to go you know then we've got the air conditioning and the heating control and then you've got where the air comes out from that you can choose from obviously to be a bit comfortable when you're driving. Um, that's probably the main things on this part. I should have brought some water. Um, and then obviously we focus obviously on the steering wheel. Uh, the steering wheel in itself, obviously you've got cruise control function, which obviously you generally would only use like on a freeway and not obviously in the main street because it's like coasting and you're just traveling at a speed. You've also got your radio controls on here so that you can select and change the radio. And then we've got your display. Um, now, the three displays that we've got is we've got your rev counter, we've got your speed that you're traveling, mm -hmm. we've got your fuel, all important. <laughs> mm -hmm. And equally important, we've got your temperature gauge, mm -hmm. you know, and that, will basically will go up as you drive as the car engine heats up it's only natural going to go and generally it'll sit in the middle between hot and cold if the if the idle ever goes too hot you have to pull over straight away because mm -hmm. there's probably no water in the radiator or there's an engine problem um, but obviously you know then if we put the lights on which we can do i can get you to put the first engagement so if you Put it into the ignition and give it one turn. And one more, sorry. That's two turns. Oh. Third turn. Okay, third turn. Yes, so Alright. So I got that part wrong. Alright. When you obviously put on the auxiliaries, yeah, you've got all these little lights. You've got your airbag signal, which is what the, mm -hmm. the steering wheel signal is. You've got a little, looks like a genie's lamp, but it's an mm -hmm. oil to indicate the oil level. You've also got a little engine, and then you've got your handbrake. Yes. And then, sorry, you've got what position you're in, whether you're in park, reverse, neutral, or drive, which is the PRNDM. Mm -hmm. Then you've got what they would call battery. And then you've also got your seatbelt monitor that obviously being the driver, whether your seatbelt's not on. Um, then on top of the dash, you've got, looks like the guy is blowing a bubblegum balloon, mm -hmm. which is actually your airbag. Okay. That's what that indicates. So that would indicate whether there is a fault with it or it's been sent off. Obviously. So if that's flashing, well, I would, then it's yeah. indicating that there is something wrong. Yes, yes. Mm, that, okay. That's not meant to flash, obviously, yep. for it to be flashing. So not good if it's flashing. No. Yep. If the airbag had gone off, you'd see it. Mm -hmm. It's like a pillow that comes out. Yep. Oh, that's the purpose of it. But if there's no airbag and it's flashing, then there's probably a malfunction with it uh, that really needs to be checked out. Um, now, do you notice that, obviously, when we turn it on, it made that little humming sound yes, that you can just did. hear yes well obviously that's ready so to speak the car's ready to 
for the next clip over to start. Mm -hmm. um, but before we go as well, we've also got to look at, you've got your windows mm -hmm. on either side, mm -hmm. uh, which we can adjust and these are electric. Yep. And you want to be able to position your windows so that you can see the sides. Yes. So when you're driving. You know, so they would be adjusted, obviously, to the seating position that you have too. <clears throat> now, they only will only cover so much range. That's why we have to do the head check. Yes. Which is to cover our blind spot, to cover our blind spot, because they're areas we can't see. You know, we've also got these little funky things, which are not just for storing post-it notes. Um, they're also for if the sun is really glaring and we don't have glasses, that we can actually use them to obviously block the glare out mm -hmm. and also block the sunlight. We can also take it off and put it onto the side. So obviously if we're driving and the sun is facing this way or that way, that it can protect us so that it doesn't come into our eyes. Um, also, if you look down to the bottom right, you'll see there's two little handles. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of them is a boot lever and the other one is a petrol, a petrol, petrol cap. Tank. Yep. Yep. Um, this is an unleaded vehicle, so obviously you'd only be filling it with unleaded petrol. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd obviously, if you want to fill up petrol, you have to pull the lever to pop the, the petrol lid. And then the same with the boot as well you can also use the boot lever with the key that you can open with most of them come with a little key lock uh, and then under there on top is for the hood which is the front of the car mm -hmm. there's a little lever that you pull towards you yep yep you don't have to pull that but you'd pull it and then what would happen is you could pop the hood so that you can fill it up with water oil uh, and obviously check anything that's wrong with it um, obviously a word of caution is if you ever had to put water in the radiator, you would never do it while the car is on or never do it while the car is being driven, you know, and I don't mean like driving and do it. I mean, if you pull over and you've been driving and you go to put water in, that thing is like a gas bomb, you know, just, <laughs> so you'd never do that. You'd have to let the car cool down in order to fill it up. And how long would you have to let it It could take out? a couple of hours. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it could. You know, so it's one of those things where you'd have to wait for it to cool down in order to fill it up. And generally, you'd only be putting coolant in there. Right. You know, which is like a cream. So in the meantime that you're waiting for it to cool down, yeah. you say a couple of hours. It can take up okay. to a, probably even longer. So, okay. You know, but... I think we've gone through most things. Obviously, you've got yeah. the rear vision mirror mm -hmm. uh, as well. So and you've got to position that so you can see the full back of the windscreen. Um, and then you've got this little flickering lever as well so that you could adjust it mm -hmm. as well. But essentially, you use this to see behind. Mm -hmm. you use the mirrors to see the sides. And you use your head checks to see your blind spots. Um, essentially, I'm just thinking... I think that's everything and then obviously you've got lights you know in the car mm -hmm. uh, contrary to belief when i was a kid i used to think that you can't drive without your lights it's illegal oh. our dad used to tell us that but it's not mm -hmm. if you need to use them and you're driving in the map obviously you know you've always got to maintain uh, control of the vehicle by having hands on the steering wheel then obviously the last few things that we're looking at is the indicator Yep. Which is to your right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you push it down, it'll turn on the right side. If you push it up, it'll turn on the left side. You can put it back in the middle. Now, there's one, two, three steps. Sorry, two steps uh, with the um, with the lights, and then there's a third one in there as well. The one, the one with the little squiggly lines on it. That's the mm -hmm. best way to describe it is uh, for your fog lights okay so you use them obviously in bad weather yeah uh, obviously if it's very foggy uh, you use them as well but then you've got your other side which is the first set of lights mm -hmm. and then you've got your headlights that actually turn on and then if you wanted to use your high beam 
you'd have to push the lever forward mm -hmm. in order to engage, so turn them on, or you could pull them backwards in order to flick in your high beams, yeah. which is interesting because it's kind of not meant to <laughs> for that. But for whatever purpose, they've got it in that way. Um, then on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. you've got your water controls for the front windscreen. Mm -hmm. And this one doesn't have a back effect. But then you've got settings. You've got first setting, you've got second setting, and then you've got your different speeds as well. So if you wanted to engage the windscreen, you can push the lever down. Yep, and then down again. And then, is it down one more? That's it. No, but that's obviously if you've got heavy rain. You know, and if you pull it towards you, it'll squirt out water and then they're automatically wiping or it wouldn't does that. You can also set the different settings as well uh, for the mm -hmm. speed adjustment mm -hmm. as well. Uh, essentially, I'm thinking that's pretty much everything on the inside of the car. We can actually go ahead and we can start the car. I'll pop my seat belt on. Uh, yeah, yeah, you would. I'll do the same. We've done the one, two, three clicks. Mm -hmm. We can actually close these windows. And then you'd be adjusting your windows. Disengage the handbrake. Put in drive. And pulling out from a curb. What have we got to do? Indicate. Um, indicate, yes. Yep. And head check. There is head check, yep. Yep. And away we go.